G'day everyone, my name's Nick and my partner at Variety and I are Belvedere Farm. Belvedere Farm operates across a couple of different properties, leased and owned, uh, in the Sunshine Coast hinterland on unceded Jinnabara country. Uh, I'm going to take you over to our lease block and show you our war on Lantana, fought by a herd of pastured pigs. And uh, then I'm going to bring you back here and show you around a little bit. Um, unfortunately, your host Dan Vanderhoek couldn't be with us today. He is responsibly locking down up in Gympie. So he's asked me to uh, film the promo without him. It could be a little bit of a wild ride. Let's, uh, let's see how that goes. So at Belvedere Farm, we practice agroecology, which is a, a term you might not have heard before, but it's a uh, set of practices and a social movement that talks about producing food with people in an ecosystem. It's as simple as that. And um, that's what we do around here. Where I'm sitting right now on my quad bike is, uh, is actually not on the home farm. It's on a block of land we lease. And um, this is an old disused dairy farm. And nine months ago, the spot I am sitting was literally 10 feet deep in a thicket of lantana. You can actually see a bit of a remaining thicket over there at the edge of this field. And with nothing but a busted old tractor and a mob of pigs and a bit of thinking and the help of our community, we have transformed this place. There's now lush pasture there. Don't worry about the cobbler's pegs, they're forbs, not weeds. Um, and on this side, We've got a diverse cover crop that was sown in behind pigs that moved about a month ago. If we could get this happening on every disused, buggered up, weedy farm in southeast Queensland, we would produce a heck of a lot of food. We could destroy factory farming. We could stop using chemical upon chemical upon chemical, which is how they are typically treating lantana in Queensland at the moment. We could have a really changed rural economy. And, um, and that's the kind of agroecology I want to practice. Let's go meet the pigs. That there's a mob of Berkshire pigs on pasture, doing an absolutely fantastic job in this wet weather. You'll see they are mashing those cobbler's pegs and that lantana into the ground. They are rooting through, creating beautiful soil behind them. That's what it looks like before they go in go up here for a quick look at what it looks like immediately after they come out. They really want to be fed as you can hear. That's what it looks like when they come out and that's our diverse cover crop coming up into it. It's like a magic trick right? Lantana to that into that. No chemicals, no heavy machinery. And what's on the menu today, if they'll let you have a look at it, they probably won't, are spent brewer's grains from a brewery down in Brisbane, and whey from a cheese maker, and waste fruit from local strawberry farms. These guys are producing the world's best heritage breed pork using foodstuffs that would otherwise be going in the bin. Just an incredible transformation. These guys are a little bit shy, we only got them this way. Little wiener piglets. Hey! And in the podcast, here's one sneaking around the door. In the podcast, I made some off colour jokes about this piece of technology. That's where they get their water from by like chomping down on that. So if you're looking for a visual from the podcast, that's what we're talking about. Thought I might show you while we're here, because we operate on leased land, um, one of the really cool things we do is that we've got a completely portable farm. So that, that there is an electric fence rig with a solar panel and a battery that powers this portable electric mesh that holds these portable pigs. This trailer here carries their shelter, their water and their spare fence. We can pack up all of this and be out of here in an hour onto the next farm. And um, that is just a real departure from the way that livestock particularly is usually raised because um, we've got no sheds, we've got no heavy infrastructure. 
We are light on the landscape and we can be responsive to the landscape. So one day, this place will not need pigs to clean Lantana. One day, this place will be a beautiful, diverse pasture, native tree belts throughout it, healthy waterways. It won't need pigs punching at it like this. And our pigs will be going on to the next place. It is just beautiful, the way that you can do this so lightly and so portably. So one of the most important things that we've done at Belvedere Farm in terms of our management since um, since I first bought the place in 2014 is implementing holistic plant grazing. So look, this is a um, this is a set of practices invented um, by Alan Savory, and you may have heard of it. Basically, it involves long-term, detailed, thoughtful planning about how you use country. That's it's as simple as that. One of the more practical aspects of that is that our cattle get moved daily onto fresh pasture. So rather than just the herd of cattle being turned out on the whole property, uh, walking around picking through what they want to eat, these cattle get moved in grazing cells every single day to fresh pasture. And what that means is if your cattle just sort of go out into your paddock and eat whatever they want, they will eat the tastiest thing first, much like me when I have a free bit. They'll eat the tastiest thing first, the shredded mozzarella straight out of the bag. And you know, then they'll get into the full cream milk straight out of the bottle, and then um, then the dairy milk chocolate. Go from there. And of course, that leaves the fridge full of stuff that they don't want to eat. Um, and unfortunately, in terms of pasture, when they keep going back and back and back to the stuff that they really find delicious, that stuff eventually is eradicated from the pastures, and they're only left with the stuff they don't really want to eat. And that's what we call overgrazing. Where we move them every day to fresh pasture, what we end up with is heavily grazed pasture like this. This is Jack the Bull, g'day mate. And on the other side of this single electric fence, delicious fresh pasture. So we give them a measured amount of that every single day. And then we give it a long recovery period. So down behind us here, these are the pasture chickens. This is a relatively short recovery. You know, they've only been out of here a few days. But if we zoom past these chickens on that hillside that's been recovering for 60 or so days, look at the green growth on them. And soon they'll go in there and enjoy that delicious pasture. That makes an enormous difference. And here they are grazing in that lush pasture. Let's, uh, let's go have a look at the chickens. The chickens are actually a really important component of our, um, of our pasture management here. They follow immediately behind the cow herd and they scratch through the manure piles, they fertilise the pasture, they pick up insects and do a really wonderful job in that ecosystem process, basically. Picked a pretty interesting day to have a look at our pasture chickens here. We're in winter, so the grass is obviously quite dry and brown where the cattle have been grazing it. It's also a wet day at the end of the wet week, the day before the chickens are due to be moved to fresh pasture. So, so tomorrow they will actually move there. Um, so this is about as bad as our chickens ever look. And you can tell it's still pretty great. They got lots of room to roam around lots of space to express their natural behaviours. There's no smell, there's no noise, there's no dust. The neighbours are happy to have it here, unlike a factory chicken farm. Um, and you know, I talk about this a lot in the podcast, but um, raising chickens on pasture is not free range. It is completely different to industrial free range and they shouldn't be compared. And, uh, and that's why we're very proud to raise pasture poultry. Do something cool.